you have the original Nucleus Nano and you're wondering if you should upgrade to the new Nucleus Nano 2. Let's take a side-by-side -side look right now. First, let's get price out of the way. These are both relatively low ticket items. The original Nucleus Nano now only costs $199, while the new Nucleus Nano 2 costs $299. So if you don't already have the original, you might as well jump in and get version two. But if you have version one, is it worth the upgrade to the latest? The most obvious difference is the handwheel. The original handwheel has a really nice looking wood grip and I love the overall design. It's simple and it just works. The Nano 2 has a fully redesigned handwheel with a large LCD display and it's packed with a ton of technology. We'll take a deeper dive into the settings and features a little bit later. The original handwheel only has a few buttons, up, down, set, calibrate and record. The Nano 2 kept the record button, added a function button, and most importantly, they added a rocker switch. The original uses micro USB to power the device. It also has a removable battery, so you can quickly swap it out with a fully charged spare on set. While the Nano 2 has been updated to a USB-C port for recharging, but it has an internal battery that you can't remove and the battery life lasts about seven hours. So depending on the length of your shoot, you might need to plug it into continuous power. The original Nano uses a proprietary mount, so you have to use the included adapter mount or buy an accessory to be able to mount it onto 15 millimeter rods. The Nano 2 mounts to a standard NATO rail, and thank heavens, because this opens up so many options for quickly mounting and removing the focus wheel from all different parts of your rig. Just be careful to mount it with a pivoting motion instead of sliding it onto your NATO rail, which could damage the electronic connector pins in the back. The original focus wheel has hard stops built in and you can't turn them off. While on the Nano 2, it also has built in hard stops, but you can use a switch on the side to turn that off and then the wheel will rotate endlessly. Now let's take a look at the different motors. The original Nano motor has a small LCD screen so you can see what channel it is set to and it also has up and down buttons so you can quickly change the channel. The Nano 2 motor loses the screen but adds an LED indicator that changes colors to let you know what mode the motor is set to. It also has one large function button for setting things like pairing, calibration, and changing modes. The first Nano motor uses micro USB input to power it, while the Nano 2 motor uses USB-C for power input. It also has a second USB-C port so you can daisy chain another motor for power supply. The USB-C ports also come out the back of the unit now instead of the side, so the cable won't bump into anything else. And the torque on the new Nano 2 motor is five times stronger than the previous motor, so it can handle even the biggest cinema lenses without a problem. Let's get this set up. What I'm using today is my Sony FX3 with the Sure Jupiter Cine lenses, which are fully manual and they have gears on both the focus ring and the iris. I'm also running a small rig V-mount battery on the back here. Let's get the focus wheel mounted now. And what I've done is actually taken a little piece of NATO rail and attached it to the side of my camera. The camera cage I'm using is the small rig half cage and it does have NATO rail on the side here, but it's just a little bit too short to mount the wheel onto it because it actually ends up interfering with the HDMI clamp here. Let's go ahead and pivot this on and then lock it down. There we go. And just like that, it's mounted. And to show you just how quick it is to remove, just pull this lever up and then I can take it right off. And now you can freehand it if you want to or hand it off to a focus pull or whatever it is. Now let's get the motor mounted and I'm running two 15 millimeter rods just to show you what's possible. So if your cage has a 15 millimeter rod on the top and you're trying to keep things really simple and light, just by running one, you could do that. You could mount it up here and then just drop it down like this and lock it off. Or if you're running a more traditional 15 millimeter rod setup, you may have two of them on the bottom here. And of course you can just slide it on and then lock it down. 
Next, we need to plug it into power. So you can use the included USB-C cable that comes with the kit, and you're gonna to wanna to plug it into port one for power. And then I'm gonna plug it into my V-mount battery in the back here, into the USB-C port. And it should power right up. I can see that that little LED light is now on. And let's turn the hand wheel back on. If you're not using it, it does automatically shut down, which it has done. Now we still need to do a lens calibration and I'll go into more detail on how to do that in just a minute. Let's keep getting this set up. So we're gonna plug in another USB-C cable and this one is not included with the kit, but there's a good chance you already have one laying around. So plug this into port two and where this is gonna go is actually directly into your camera. So depending on the model that you're using, it may or may not be supported, but for the FX3 it is. And I'm gonna plug it right into the USB-C port here on the side. So that's all the physical setup that there is. It's really simple. Just mount the hand wheel and motor and then plug in two USB-C cables. The focus wheel has three main screens. The one you're gonna use the most is this focus screen. Then you have your camera settings, which you can see I've got the FX3 plugged in with a USB-C cable on the motor and then on the side of the camera. It is reading the white balance correct at 5200 Kelvin and then we're at 24 frames per second. Now where there is kind of a weird glitch here is it's saying the ISO, you can see it's kind of broken up into two lines. The ISO is actually at 640 on the camera right now and it's not reading that as well as the f-stop because I have a manual focus lens on there with no electronics, so it doesn't actually know what f-stop I'm at. The third screen is your lens screen. And again, this is something that it doesn't know which lens is mounted on the camera right now because it's fully manual, but you can go in here and customize it. You have to actually go in and set it up with the lens brand and name and everything like that. And you can actually go type all of that in and switch it out to something else. I'm just leaving it as the RE default right now, although this is not accurate. You can focus from this screen, but I found it to be slightly redundant. I think that the main focus screen works totally fine for me. Something to note is that when you're in the camera setting screen, you cannot focus. You wanna go back to focus and then it'll start controlling again. The hand wheel should come paired out of the box to the motor, but let's say you wanna go in and adjust some of the settings. Well, you just swipe up from the bottom and this is where you get into all the different settings menus. So you have connect, settings, system, motor, and then back to connect. And of course you can go home, which will take you back here. So let's take a look at how you set up the motor settings. Let's say you wanna change the default that it comes with. Just tap on that. And I'm using it for focus. So I'm gonna select that. And really the first thing you wanna do with a manual lens is do the auto calibrate. So I'm gonna tap that and it's running right now. There we go. Now it is fully calibrated. You can do a manual calibration if you're using a lens that doesn't have hard stops. Now the first thing I wanna adjust is the torque setting. So the torque on this is much more powerful than the previous generation Nano One motor. And you simply change it by tapping on it. And as you tap, it'll get stronger and stronger and tap again and it'll reset to the lowest. And honestly, I found that the lowest torque setting works great with this Sure lens and then you can change the direction that it goes in. So right now I've got mine going to the right, but you can also go to the left with it. So just depending on how you mount the focus motor or how your lens barrel focuses, you can adjust that. But one thing to be really mindful of is the sensitivity. So if I turn this really down, as I turn the focus wheel when it's activated, it's not right now, it won't be nearly as sensitive and fine tuned to my focus adjustments. I found that keeping the sensitivity high makes it possible to do really nice, easy, fine adjustments. If you have multiple motors, you can go in and do the same sort of setup for your iris, zoom, or other. Now let's take a look at how to set A and B stops. So let's say you have a subject at one distance, simply tap the function button, and then you can go ahead and focus to your other subject, or maybe it's the background, and press the function button again. And there we go, we have our two A and B stops. You can see those little orange ticks. And as you hit them, you've got that haptic feedback, you can hear that. Now these aren't hard stops. You can spin through this to infinity and close focus on the lens. So if you want them to be hard stops, you have to set them a little bit differently. First, I'm gonna show you how to reset them. You just simply double click the function button. That deletes the last one you did and double click it again and that deletes the first one. So now we don't have any stops anymore, but we wanna make 
hard stops with our A and B. So simply hold down A, B, and now you just heard it do a little bit of vibration and it's also orange. Now you'll see it kind of creates a little trail of orange. Let's create our next B spot, press it, and there we go, it's set. So now it'll actually hard stop at each of those. You can hear it. Let's go back and it hard stops. So that's great for hitting your marks every time and knowing that once you hard stop there, you've hit your mark perfectly. And I find that that works even better than just relying on the haptic feedback. And to reset it, just hold down A, B again. And there we go. Now, if you need to mount your hand wheel in some direction other than straight up and down, you can actually flip the screen to match it. So we'll swipe up from the bottom and we'll go into system scroll down and that's where we get to screen rotation and here you can simply tap and orient it in any direction that you need to you can also adjust the brightness of the hand wheel so depending on if you're shooting in a studio or outside just swipe up from the bottom tap on settings and there it is brightness and then you can make this as bright as you actually need it to be and it gets pretty bright or you can dim it down conserve your battery life i like to keep mine at just a little over a quarter and uh, maybe a third brightness and that works pretty well if you don't want to set it manually you actually can use the auto mode and there's a light sensor and so depending if you're going indoor or outdoor it'll adjust automatically for you just like your phone does which is really cool you can also adjust the haptic feedback to your liking maybe you want it to be much more subtle or really strong so you swipe up from the bottom again go into settings and then you want to go down to vibration and I've got it on. You can turn it off if you don't want any haptic feedback at all. And I have my strength set to two bars, but you can set it even higher if you need to. Now, in order to connect the hand well to your camera and see the settings and do some start stop recording with the record button, you need to set it up on the hand well. So you can swipe up from the bottom, tap on connect, connect a camera, and then choose your camera type. For me, it's Sony and then I'm connecting it with USB-C. There are a bunch of other options here as well. USB-C, and there we go, it's connected. Now I had it connected already earlier, but you can see right here that we have Sony USB-C. Now I can press the record button on the focus wheel, and you can see the recording has started on the wheel and on the back of the camera as well. Press it again to stop recording. Now, in order to get the camera paired up with the hand wheel so you can do record, start, and stop and see your camera settings, you've got to get them paired together on the camera side as well. This is for the FX3, but you can do this with other camera bodies as well. And Tilta has made a full tutorial on a bunch of other camera bodies as well you can check out. So let's go into menu. We're going to scroll down to network and then go into transfer and remote. And this is where you need to turn on PC remote function. I already have it on, but if yours was off, go ahead and turn that on. And you want to also do PC remote connect method, USB. Make sure it's set on USB and not Wi-Fi. Then let's go down to setup and you're going to go all the way down to USB. Click over and for USB power supply, make sure that that is turned on and that it's not off. Mine's already all set up to do this, but those are the basic settings to quickly set up the FX3. Now I'm gonna press record on the hand wheel so you can see it start recording on the camera. And then I'm gonna stop the recording on the hand wheel as well. Tilta made a nearly hour long tutorial on how to use the Nano 2. So if you need more technical support or you're getting stuck, definitely give that video a watch next. Now let's talk about a few of the cons. Sometimes I'll accidentally swipe over to the camera settings screen and that disables the focus wheel. So you might be trying to pull it and be wondering, did I lose connection or battery? What the heck is going on? And then you look at it and you realize, oh, I'm on the wrong screen and you just swipe back over and you can control it again. Luckily, there's a good way to avoid that. You simply tap on this little lock icon and there we go. Now it's locked. I can't accidentally change the screen, but I can still pull focus and do everything that I need to. I'm just not going to change any settings with the touch screen now accidentally. 
There is a bit of a learning curve. It takes more time to figure out just how everything works and get everything set up. Whereas with a simple manual follow focus, like this one also from Tilta, it just works. And there's really no setup phase. Even the original Nucleus Nano is much more simple to get set up right out of the box. You can also set up the original Nucleus Nano motor as a second motor with this system, but it really didn't work well for me and was quite confusing. Even with following all their instructions, it just still didn't really work great. So if you want a second motor, I just recommend buying another one of the Nucleus Nano 2 motors and it's gonna work a lot better with this system. This was just kind of confusing to be honest. The new Nano 2 also does not work with the original Nucleus Nano side grips, which if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I absolutely love this thing because it is perfect for pulling focus when you're using a shoulder rig. You just put this on the end of the arms and you can pull focus with one finger. I absolutely love this setup. It would have been nice if these were backwards compatible with the motor, but unfortunately they're not. Now they did just release the new Nucleus Nano 2 grip for pre-order and it has way more features and ability abilities than the original Nano 1 grip anyway. The new Nucleus Nano 2 is definitely worth the money in my opinion, and if you need some of the new features like multiple motors and stronger torque, then it's definitely worth upgrading from the original Nucleus Nano or a manual follow focus. And if you want to pick up any of this gear, just check out the links in the description below. And thanks to Tilt Up for sending this out for review. They didn't pay me to say anything or see this video before posting. All right, I'll see you in the next video.